welcome to Bening Podcast in the episode number eight. Uh, reaction to multiple pathways to achieve transportation sector carbon neutrality in Asia. Uh, this episode is uh, in response of previous episode, episode number seven, which we have a guest speaker from Toyota Daihatsu, Pa Indra. So we will discuss about what we have uh, learned or hear from Pa Indra. And then uh, we can have some pointers to move on to the next episode. For this, I would like to ask Pa Kostup to be the moderator. So I pass uh, the floor to Pa Kostup. Thank you, Paika. Thank you for this opportunity again. It was indeed an interesting episode with Pa Indra last week and also Ibu Dami joining in where the two different worlds, uh, the private sector and also the academia were on a common ground and trying to see uh, what could be the possible ways they can collaborate in a very interesting topic, which is a topic of driving humanity forward and the green paradox. So of late, we have been seeing like everybody is talking of going green. Uh, there's a recently concluded uh, convention on going green in Glasgow and all. So many things happening. All governments, all countries trying to commit to the carbon neutrality or going carbon neutral in certain durations. Some are accepting, some are rejecting. So it's a mixed bag right now. So what we were understanding from Prahindra's communication last week uh, from what are the different approach and the way Toyota is moving from a, a mere transportation company to a mobility concept is something really encouraging and insightful to know what actions are there. So as a comment from Budami that it is not that private sector is only profit hungry, but it's very much there to consider it as a sustainable business and it's evaluating its impact on the society. That's something really good to hear and understand like how it could be bridged and create the curriculum for the future. Uh, I was the host last episode. I could understand the, uh, you know, the opportunities and the energies uh, both the domains we're bringing. But I would like to hear from Pa Echo uh, on today's call and today's seminar about what was his take on the overall uh, understanding and the way forward uh, from Ibu Dami or Pa Indra's conversation. Over to you, Pa Echo. Thank you, Pa Kostup. Um, uh, first of all, actually, I'd like to uh, thank um, Pa Eka who uh, invited me to, to join the conversation with uh, Dr. Indra. Um, I really appreciate that because then uh, it really linked to what we have discussed in the past uh, four episodes before that. And um, now we know that uh, Toyota, Daihatsu, they, they have uh, really extensive uh, plan. It's not only like what Budami commented, uh, industry or, or private sector is just about profit, but they also think about um, how to to uh, improve the, the life of uh, their customer. And even uh, touching on um, in the area um, of the energy generation itself, uh, looking for hydrogen, for example, uh, they don't just use uh, any hydrogen, they want to have a green hydrogen to be used. So really interesting uh, discussion with uh, uh, Pindra and as well as uh, Budami from the uh, CTSS. Uh, so <clears throat> what was a very interesting uh, discussion. I enjoyed very much. And I think uh, there are a few topics there that we can uh, further explore from now on. But back to you, Pak Kostup. Great. And I would also like to invite Paika and get his thoughts about what exactly. Because Paika in the previous episode uh, had briefed about the transdisciplinarity and the sustainability bit, which was also touched upon by, by, by Indra during his presentation. And the overall theme is, uh, and what we have been discussing that we are in the same 
storm but in different boats so how do we navigate uh, jointly is something really really interesting and worthwhile to discuss your thoughts paika yeah thanks paika <laughs> uh yeah actually that episode number 7 is a very uh, momentous event yeah uh, which the private sector and the academia met and try to know each other and like uh, you said pakosup and paiko said that the private sector is not only a profit hungry entity <laughs> and they are like paiko said they are also trying to improve the life of their customer so i think this is a a, a major major breakthrough in understanding each other and trying to co- collaborate with each other which is in line with the cts's name transdisciplinary approach transdisciplinarity where everybody chips in everybody have a role everybody uh, try to make the conversation try to connect collaborate and also sustainability regarding the transdisciplinarity or transdisciplinary itself where the main topic is that we try uh, to connect with each other like uh, paindra said how to make picking up garbage more effective efficient yeah, yeah. so you have you connect the garbage bin with a the sensor something uh, with a sensor yeah, that sensor which 5G. one is yeah which one is full which one is not full which one needs to pick up right uh, in that in that video i saw uh, i also mentioned that is this, this is a basic understanding of uh, how to handle a complex situation or complexity you connect those things that need to connect and you disconnect those things that doesn't need to be connected <laughs> yeah so yeah just to build on that like it can be something like learn relearn and learn unlearn and relearn so you know yes something <laughs> exactly pa because until now i think uh, the viewers already have a seventh episode right? maybe they are wondering okay where is the transdisciplinary where is the transdisciplinarity in action and i strongly believe uh, just talking with each other is the form of transdisciplinary approach agree pa yeah Me. that is the most important thing <laughs> yeah as it is said pa ka and pa ko coming together is the beginning so only once we come together it could we can progress because a lone person can travel a certain distance but if we individuals are coming then the distance travel will be much much more and much much uh, be impactful right yes so i need to stress out uh, this point also because uh, i think that the private sector is doing in actual in actuality what is the transdisciplinary saying and on the other side the academia is maybe trying to find what is the actual implementation of transdisciplinary mm. so uh, maybe actually, if i reframe uh, just your suggestion by if i if you permit it's something let's say like uh, the private sector or the industrial sector is trying to solve a problem which is uh, they are which is at hand and they want to solve it while they are running so they cannot stop 
to focus on the problem and then fix it and then move ahead because that's not the way they are designed to work so they want to fix the problem while on the run so they will make mistakes they will have errors or something but the intent and the focus is okay we need to solve this fix it and then keep it, keep the momentum going whereas the academia is more focused on let's say like of on multiple what ifs like what if this happens what if this happens and what could be the problem which would be envisaged right but if this is an approach or this is a platform where there's a synergy or it acts as a bridge then the problem which is say a prevalent problem in the industry and needs a special attention can be diverted to the academia then you know they have the life problems to work on and the learnings could be much better and the the next generation who's going to work on these problems will have a first hand experience of these problems to work with so that once they are coming in the industry side it would be much more improvised and the actions would be much more refined and uh, you know target oriented and focus oriented that's that's one maybe a key takeaway i'm carrying uh, would like to get your thoughts and opinion yeah yes uh, i agree very much with that point uh, the difference now is that the world is more interconnected by in an interdependent yeah so maybe before the internet age or during the early age of internet uh, those academia and those industry can have the luxury of having a gap but because of the more interconnection and more interconnectedness so academia doing something that will affect industry vice versa uh, maybe they are not aware yet but it is becoming uh, more interconnected and interconnectedness yeah so the the time and the space or the gap is become less and less hmm. so which brings us again to the issue of collaborating or collaboration right right but uh, if if i'm not wrong uh, pindra also touch on about that uh, in in the past conversation uh, with uh, budami that um, actually uh, industry also can help probably if there's a chance to talk to um, mm. students and then mm. uh, you know the new young minds might have a different way of thinking and if they know what the industry is thinking directly from the industry uh, practitioner maybe they can have um, or they, the the student even can uh, provide or can can contribute uh, ideas yeah whereby i also see you now uh, more and more uh, industries or private um, sector are having a collaboration with universities so uh, like Uh, a company having uh, a certain research laboratory in the universities and and the as what i can mention the gap between uh, industry practitioner or the private sectors and the academia are getting uh, lesser and lesser getting smaller the gap are getting smaller sure. they even now they work together so when we have a, a laboratory for example in one of the universities so for example toyota have a, uh laboratory in one university the company that i work for having a laboratory in ntu here for example so we really work together with the university yeah so probably this is one of the uh implementation of what i come mentioned way forward yeah yeah so uh if this mm. goes more and more uh then we will have the the yeah. effect of those uh, uh incremental uh, collaboration yeah agree uh, but one one caveat <laughs> or one thing that must be clear is that 
industry and the academia is uh, on the same level. None, mm-hmm. none serve the other. They are independent. They are yet they are interdependent. They are disjointed. So, yeah. yeah, this is also a very delicate thing <laughs> that mm-hmm. must be uh, managed. Tied up control. together. Yeah, yeah. I I don't know because if you mismanage it or mistreat this relation. There will be no collaboration. <laughs> uh, yeah. I completely agree. That reminds me, actually, Pap. If we go to say prehistory times, or uh, if we go even further, let's say like how the trade started. So when currency was not there, and basically it was more of a barter. So there were different people having different kinds of jobs. Let's say a farmer is producing one farmer is producing rice, second farmer is producing some barley or other pulses or something on those lines, right? The cobbler producing shoes, the goldsmith making some ornaments and all, but no currency there. So what they were doing is they were cultivating it to the uh, population, which is the addressable population, and they would trade or the exchange the goods for one another. but yet they were growing so that was the that is a good example like how they would be collaborating it and maybe post that or once the actual growth started there will multiple things happen as even maslow has indicated in his uh, exp uh, in his research and on his publications of the theory x and theory y and right what exactly are the primary needs the secondary needs the tertiary needs so likewise right so which pindra also mentioned like we need to distinguish about the need and the want so if we are able to curtail on say the needs and the wants or the define between the needs and the wants life can be much more simpler and it could also start impacting the environment and have a different effects right so that's also a a topic because at the end the customer who's basically the consumer and all the economies are driven by consumption so stopping the consumption would be detrimental but how do we have a distinction between the need and the want and then you know basically the aspirations as well that's something worthwhile to discuss in coming episodes your take pai ko pai ka on this yeah uh, um completely agree with pak kostop yeah so uh when when pak kostop mentioned about the 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 needs and and the one yeah. so um this actually one of the biggest um uh source of waste uh when we talk about waste yeah. so uh previously we talk about energy and and how to to uh to have a clean energy on the transportation area which i always mention about that 12% things but there are bigger area that we can actually do better especially uh in term of uh, food for example that really uh, relate very close to needs and one so the the food production itself has has a bigger impact on the uh, environment and if we we see some numbers of uh, waste uh, food waste in every countries so if you take a look indonesia for example that numbers is really uh, hurting our heart if if we really uh, looking into the numbers uh, how many uh, tons of food are disposed every day and that to mm. produce that food itself mm. consume a lot of energies and 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 produce a lot of uh, carbon then disposing it yeah. again another energy and carbon so not only a waste but it's also consuming more and more energy and uh, uh producing more and more carbon so yeah really a full um, environment that we talk about here so that's why very much aligned with pai what pai kam mentioned about transdisciplinarity uh should be a lot of discipline that involved in this uh, area yeah 
but if we are uh, if we are talking about needs and wants, uh, especially human needs and wants, that is a very wide scope. <laughs> so we need the sociologists there. We need the psychologists there. We need the industry there, academia, acad- academia, of course. Among mm-hmm. others is soci- sociology, psychology, and so on. And uh, but I think the major problem now facing hum- humanity as a whole in disting- in distinguishing between the needs and the wants is that, like you said, Paiko, uh, food waste. If we consider how the pro- uh, the process of uh, cultivating cultivating the food, but we just uh, throw it away finally, not mm. appreciating. It. Yes, uh, I think this is this is, this is actually a philosophical thinking. <laughs> uh, I don't have any data, but I think the basic problem is that. In moving forward, uh, humanity is uh, taking everything for granted. Even the things that are provided from the nature. So they think that they can take and then if they are not satisfied, it's not satisfied, uh, satisfying their wants, not needs, they throw it away. So, whereas I think we must return back to the wisdom of uh, that what we what we take is actually not taking; it is what we receive from nature, and then we must return back to the nature. So, for example. I think the cycle is always uh, in nature like that. So for example, if uh, we return back to the EV side, we are talking about uh, manufacturing car and battery. We need the uh, iron and nickel. And we know that naturally iron and nickel exists in a oxide form. It is F- FeO or Nickel, nickel oxide something or ferrous oxide something that to extract it, we must do a process of reduction. And unfortunately, reduction, the most uh, available substance is carbon. <laughs> so carbon will be used and then produ- producing CO2 and so on and so forth. But I think this is the natural cycle because if we think about ourselves, our human being, we breathe oxygen and we exhale carbon dioxide. But that carbon dioxide is actually uh, not harmful, not necessarily harmful because it is uh, recycled by the trees, by photosynthesis producing oxygen and uh, glucose for the growth of the tree. That this is a missing link that agree. Yeah. We are not returning back the nature to the nature, what we are uh, receiving. It's basically tying up the joints by, as you rightly said, the cycles, which are there and it's a complete cycle. Let's say right from the creation to destruction and, and, Again, recreation. So it's going in circles. So same things will have to be developed for all the things which we do. And basically the human aspect, like what exactly is his need and what he aspires or what he wants. If there is a demarcation and some kind of a, not, I would say a regulation, but, uh, you know, this is a very, very softer issue or the societal issue, like how the mindset is being done and the conservation of the overall planet is brought into the perspective. Then things would start emerging completely different, right? And there would be a completely different perspectives of looking at things. 
whether it is the product or whether it is anything which we do in our day to day life that reminds me the wonderful example given by paindra that say the garbage truck never has thought like the truck is going every time but if we make the bin smart the garbage bin itself smart then we know whether the truck needs to be going there on a daily basis or no so maybe within the optimization side if it is done as we do the route optimization or something we know what frequency has to be used so that you know you are actually reducing the carbon footprint in one aspect so something on these kind of things we need to further detail out further debate have innovative ideas have the young minds contributing to the ideas the college going students the school going to students and have their you know inclusive involvement in the overall aspects to drive it forward then only it could be you know completing the loop and as pai correctly said that not all carbon dioxide is the enemy carbon dioxide is very much required for the photosynthesis and that in turn is required to give the oxygen which is required for us to breathe and live in this planet right so some of a similar fashion has to be evolved and, and this can be evolved only together so again coming back to the transdisciplinary approach and then having it sustainable so that it is available for all of us on this planet right yeah very much agree so this is the point of transdisciplinarity and transdisciplinary you you run and try to solve the problem but you must right run in the right direction yes <laughs> if you don't keep watch on where the direction is you are going then yeah. that will be <laughs> unbelievable <laughs> true but first thing is pap do we really need to run yes if it's something could be walked down yes could be walk it could exactly. be jog mm. or do we really need that speed yes in some aspects we would definitely need the speed and the direction mm. but not every run is a 100 meter run so even in olympics you would see uh, you know there are different kinds of race it's a 100 meters there's a 400 meters there are marathons there are what not so, but the game plan is different for all these different different kinds of you know the sports <laughs> there so it's something on those so you have to be on the field and see really what exactly is the requirement agree but if marathon basically you are pacing right you yeah. must make sure you have a steady pace and then you just give the uh, final push at the end outburst but if you are talking about 100 meters you start from beginning have a powerful boost yeah yeah to reach the maximum speed at the lowest time possible right to achieve the record yeah so this is this is this must be a conversation also between yeah. all of us pa agree pa no? and, yeah. and yeah please please and then not to not not to forget but we we need to stop some sometime yeah of course so we need to stop and reflect <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> so that yeah. brings to an interesting point also paiko uh, that the training how the sportsmen undergo uh, how their minds they train them is something which we need to reflect and try to use into the different aspects of the industry the academy and all because that's a learning and the best way to learn is who have already mastered it so that you know the as we call it in india it's the guru and the disciple and then the disciple is learning be, uh, below the guru right or the teacher so something on those lines so that you know we can converge on things which are necessary and we can bring the right attention and the right focus to achieve a common goal right so that could be an interesting mix about how different aspects of the societies people the cultures can coexist and co-create to address a common problem so today i believe we have not gone into the 
technicalities of the evs but more on the aspect of you know the various facets like what would be required to uh, achieve what we are intending to do to basically for servicing this planet and pass mm. it to the next generation maybe in a better condition if not what we have received from our previous generation yeah today i think we are reflecting like by echo mm. said we pause for a we moment pause. to to <laughs> think and try to tie up everything and invite the other mm. many uh, many other side many other actors that must be invited to have this conversation true and in my opinion the true heroes would be the people who are actually working on the field on the site and ensuring and driving a small small change because small change consolidated over a number of years or over a period of time will look like a disruption and that would be the new way of life right so we have seen the the growth potentials how the businesses are growing or how the digital business and technology business grow in a very small amount of time if we go into the further depths it's basically because like they have been doing small small changes into the problems faced by the you know uh, the society at large and then trying to have a solution to that if a similar approach is brought for this initiative of driving humanity forward and the green paradox then definitely we would have a disruption which would be beneficial for every one of us mm-hmm. agree ba yeah. so uh, so pai ka pai ko today has been an interesting reflection from what pa mm. indra left us with in the last week and mm. definitely it's setting up a very very bigger ground and you know a larger audience which could connect and relate to what message we are trying to drive and it would be really interesting to see uh, in the upcoming episodes on the various uh, aspects of the societies and their understanding of this c- their understanding of this concerns and also uh, the you know uh, their understanding of the concerns and also the uh, approach what they would like to drive going forward that's all from my side uh, what do you paika for me also enough uh, paiko yeah but uh, very nice uh, reflection today i think uh, Uh, we don't have to uh, discuss continuing about evs 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 because uh, the, the ev part is is a, is is one part of the total system of the solution so we we have other solution that we need to uh, explore more and with that i think uh, links with what paika mentioned about uh, uh, reaching for more um, participant of this discussion in a uh, very nice way got then bakosto thank you ba thank you ba so as usual it is always a uh, enjoyable very enjoyable to have a conversation with both of you bakosto and paiko thank you Likewise, very much paika. yes <laughs> my pleasure paika bakosto yeah. Thank you very much and thank, thank you, you for all the viewers. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you pa. Thank you pa.